In a country where majority of the citizens have become docile, trapped in their own fear, and have resigned to the suffering and smiling life Fela Nicola Kokuti talked about, even though they yearn for a radical change, for a better Nigeria, and indeed a better life, there are those who would rather risk their lives and whatever they hold dear to see the change happen. These individuals, ordinary citizens, who have risen above ethnic sentiment and pecuniary benefits with a common courage to speak and act against the whims and caprices of the establishment, these well-meaning and considerable Nigerians, whose voices and actions defined the 2023 elections in the most inspirational, revolutionary, and hopeful manner, are the reason we are gathered here today, and the inspiration behind this novel idea, hence the thing, acts and voices of valor celebrating heroes of democracy and good governance. Ladies and gentlemen, let's sit back in sober reflection as we relive the moments and memories of the watershed 2023 election. If Labour goes through this effort and supports somebody to lead this country and it fails, that note is more important to me than anything. I don't want to tell you people any idea. I want to listen to you. My job is to listen so that you don't go there and start giving them a excuse. Because what we are used to in this country is for people to go into office and start saying when they saw, what they saw when they get in there. I don't want to see anything when I get in there. I want to hear it now so I know what to do when I get in there. All right, I'm live in Makodi Benue State. I'm after the grade, and this is the one million match. And as you can see, this is a short down. Uh, you know what do you think about the current trajectory of the country? There's no country anymore. As we are today, Nigeria is gone. What we have is a carcass, and, and unfortunately, uh, we do not have a president. We have someone who rigged his way into office, an illegitimate president, and who doesn't care? The way people see how their will was subverted, because when you have a, a, a political coup, a civilian coup, like what we had in the 20, with the 2023 election, it's the same thing like a military coup. And so, if you see a lot of people that have given up on the nation, they know even when they go to the courts, they won't get anything. So they take the laws into their hands. And the rest of us that are law-abiding, are the ones who are being punished by the state. The Nigerian state would rather, you know, have a conversation with you, negotiate with, with you when you carry arms against the country. But when you are law-abiding, it clamps on you, it kills you, and it just disposes of you the way it wants to. We either have Tofia, a... our mum no get patuo. How can a country that has a me additional, the current president of African Development Bank, Mohamed Bakido, the secretary general of OPEC, Alaji Dangote, Tony Elumelu, Donald Duke, Jimovia, Chukuma Soludo, Sanusi Lamido, Dr. Ngozi Okonjiwala, Philip Emma Gwalia, Professor Patti Tony, DK Chukumarije, and many Nigerians where they bring the heart. I be at the grace on our way, they mad. See a year useless youth, darling, busy analyzing Arsenal and Chelsea matches. On behalf of our presidential candidate, Mr. Peter Obi, I address you all and indeed all Nigerians on the current situation in the country following the announcement of the purported result of the presidential election held on 25th February 2023. First, let me sincerely thank all Nigerians for their belief in us and for coming out en masse to vote for the Labour Party and for the cause they believe in, the birth of a new Nigeria. We are immensely grateful to the youth, obedience and all support groups including Nigerians in diaspora for their sacrifices, conduct and commitment to a better Nigeria. It is our position that the purported results did not meet the minimum criteria of a transparent, free, and fair election. In addition to the most condemnable attacks, violence, voter intimidation, and suppression, 
the election was conducted in clear violation of agreed and promised INEC rules and guidelines. The Electoral Act 2002 has amended and indeed the Nigerian Constitution. As evident, the institutions of the state and leaders that were supposed to ensure the sanctity of the election, again, and as in the past, collaborated and colluded to subvert the will of the good people of Nigeria. Please be assured of our determination to fight the injustice that have been perpetrated on Nigerians through all legal and peaceful means. While painful, we implore you all to please remain peaceful and calm as our fight and determination for a new Nigeria is just beginning. We equally encourage you all to continue with the campaigns and vote massively for Labour Party in the forthcoming governorship and states House of Assembly elections on 11th March 2023. Our principal, His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi, will in due course speak to you and indeed the nation. Thank you and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We went, we went into the elections as Labour Party. We won, we won the election as Labour Party. We are going to claim our mandate as Labour Party. Jesus, they turned everything upside down. My God, come down. They, they disrupted everything. You are one of them. You are one of them. This guy is one of them. This is your phone. This guy is one of them. Okay, hold this guy. He's one of them. You guys were live. We're live here, we're live. See all of them, oh. See them, oh. See them here. See them, they scattered it, oh. Ah, ah. See it, oh. They have, this, they have scattered our pulling units. Look at, look at our ballot boxes. They're not meat. They can't. We need army presence here. Yeah. We need army presence here. Yeah. We will protect our Hello, my fellow citizens. My name is Professor Edio Paroji. I'm the chairman of the Nigerian Labour Party USA chapter, uh, bringing you this message of hope and solidarity on the eve of uh, a major consequential presidential election coming on in Nigeria tomorrow. Uh, February 25th, uh, uh, 2023. Um, this election uh, is, uh, like I mentioned, a consequential one. And it's all about you, your family, and your uh, communities. Let nobody tell you it's about them or anything else. And some of the forces that have gotten Nigeria into the ditch where we are today uh, will do everything in their powers to make sure that they dissuade you from exercising your franchise. Story potentially about somebody who has a chance of becoming Nigeria's next president, being linked to drug trafficking, and is just relegated to the to the um, to the realm of like social media rumors and you know stuff you see on on uh, uh, blog pages on Instagram and things like that. So I dug into it, and the information is it's visible to the blind and audible to the deaf. Right, that this fellow was involved in drug trafficking and this is not an allegation this is not a claim this is a documented fact right there are legal documents backing this up right this guy forfeited four hundred and sixty thousand dollars of funds that way i quote proceeds of narcotics trafficking this is on record so i don't know you know 
you know, uh, possibly because it's been 29 years since this thing happened. And as we tend to do in Nigeria, we tend, we tend to think that justice has an expiry date. So because this thing happened 29 years ago and he has been able to get away with it, he became a governor, he governed for two terms, he has been a political operator, he was elected as a senator in 1992 as well. So basically he got away with it all the time. So the, the posturing from the camp seems to be that, well, this is already dead and buried, so why are you resurrecting this now? For those that have won, I'd ask you this. What did you win? Did you win the confidence of the people or you won intimidation and fear of the people? Did you win the belief of the people or you won their disbelief in what Nigeria has become, sadly? Did you win the trust of the people or you won the discontent of the people? Did you truly win them over or you won chaos on the streets? Did you truly win the affirmation of the people or you won the coercion of the people? Did you really win the togetherness of the people or you won the division of the people because of your own innate selfish benefits? Did you truly win the love of the people or you won the disgust of the people? So I ask again, for all of those that won, by coercing the people. What did you win, I ask you? One day we'll come, we'll grow old, we'll be in our dying beds, and we'll take a panoramic view of our lives. Would you truly say that this was a moment you were proud of? As an electoral officer, I have never in my life, never participated in any election, never. My duty came calling. I made my inquiries from Abuja and I said, Ane Jimbabu Arogo. If I perish, I perish. I'm mad you get me. They came with their threats. They came with their money. Oh. And they came with their intimidation. I will mark our quarrel. That's it, Baba Ahmed, and I remain absolutely undaunted and deeply committed to the project of a new Nigeria that will be built on honesty, transparency, fairness, justice, equity. All the above starts with the process. Process through which people come into office is far more fundamental, more important than what they do thereafter. It is my belief that I've maintained so consistently that if you must answer His Excellency, the process through which you arrive to office must be excellent. We must now require that we do the right things in order to generate the required confidence and moral authority to lead. The destruction of a society begin and gradually progress when we act rascally. We will govern by the rule of law because we know what not doing that will bring about. Let me reiterate and assure you that good people of Nigeria that will explore all legal and peaceful action to reclaim our mandate. Uyao, oh, election don't come. Home. This is my PVC. I'm sure you have yours and that you are ready to vote. I don't want to hear any of that rubbish. All those, uh, uh, my vote will not count. So what's the point of what? Oh God, oh God. I beg, please, nobody should annoy me. This is 2023. With everything that we're going through, if there's still some people saying that, then really and truly, I don't know what's wrong with them. Somehow, we've been able to gather momentum, unbelievable momentum for this formidable third force. I say to you, it is very possible. Forget about all those pessimists, all those cynics that are coming to you, all those irresponsible people that apparently love to suffer and want to keep this status quo. Forget about those people and just focus on the goal. The goal is that we, the people, this time around, have decided that we are going to choose who rules us. My name is Dr. Mo, uh, one of the conveners for this Free Nigeria movement that we are on. Uh, it is imperative to engage in peaceful protests as enshrined in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Looking at what has happened, I mean, I know that many will say that um, 
will protest be the best way to uh, go about what we're doing and to ensure that we have um, our requests and our demand granted. This is probably the only tool to be able to pour out our energy, our cry, and speak our demands to both people who are going through a lot of pains right now due to loss of family ones and um, you know the loss of credibility, the loss of trust, and the failure of people who are supposed to uphold the dignity of our institutions as a country. You know, speaking particularly to INEC, um, you can see what has happened. To keep silent, to stay in our houses and in our homes, to mourn and to cry, is to tell the world that we are in support of all the inhumane things that have happened during the course of this election. Nigerian brothers and sisters, greetings to you all. I am constrained to speak at this point. And I crave the indulgence of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency General Muhammadu Buhari, to make this statement because I've had opportunity to keep him aware of what I know is happening and the danger looming ahead. On many occasions in the past, I have not hesitated to point out lacuna in the action of the president and his government. But as far as the election issues that we are now facing are concerned, the president has proved beyond reasonable doubt that he will want to leave a legacy of free, fair, transparent, and credible elections. Until last Saturday night, February 25th, 2023, the good and noble plan and preparation for the elections seem to be going well. For the independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, a lot of money was spent to introduce bimodal voter accreditation system, DIVAS, and the server for immediate transmission of results from polling units. It is no secret that INEC officials at operational level have been allegedly compromised to make what should have worked not to work and to revert to manual transmission of results, which is manipulated and the results doctored. The chairman of IMEC may claim ignorance, but he cannot fold his hands and do nothing when he knows that election process has been corrupted and most of the results that are brought out, uh, that are brought outside Divas and Sava are not true reflection of the will of Nigerians who have made their individual choice. At this stage, we do not need wittingly or unwittingly to set this country on fire with the greed, the responsibility, and unpatriotic act of those who allegedly gave money to INEC officials for perversion and those who collected the blood money. Let me appeal to the chairman of INEC if his hands are clean to save Nigeria from the looming danger and disaster which is just waiting to happen. If the chairman can postpone elections four days to the election four years ago,
He can do everything to rectify the errors of the last two days. No beavers, no result to be acceptable. I know uploading through server, no result to be acceptable. Hmm. Really, I would say I never anticipated the outcome. This is how it is. You can see the reality. I went out like every normal Nigerian that wants to vote. I joined the queue. The queue was a long one, so I couldn't stand for long. Some group of boys just walked down. They were like opposite where we were queuing, and they were discussing, and later I didn't see them again. They had, they had gone. Like, let me say, 30 minutes later, I felt a huge impact on my face. Instantly, I had gone short. Initially, I felt I've been shot at. I thought it was a bullet that hit me. I started shouting for help, calling for help. People were running past me. I saw some um, broken bottles, which I presume is one of those things that were thrown at, uh, thrown at me with uh, maybe something with different sharp edges. I was taken to the nurse's compound and she had to administer medication to stop the bleeding. I think that was the video that went viral because the bleeding was so much. I said I needed the proper medical attention, so he brought the car there and took me to the hospital. <sighs> it was really a difficult one. I could still work, I have life in me. I know my vote can make a difference, can, can make a change. It's important I vote. I was disappointed. First off, there were no security officials in our polling units. When those talks came, they even threw away most of the votes that were already casted. As a Nigerian who has gone through this process and experienced this, I wouldn't wish for a repetition of this, a reoccurrence, that the government will take it optimal that there is security in polling units, that the election goes free and fair, no matter what. I'm not a politician. I'm just a Nigerian performing my civic duty. Don't take it lightly. You are fighting for your freedom. It's not an ordinary election you're having. If Obina don't win, forget that.